Well, we're still in 2 Samuel, but we've been looking at the parallel passages from 1 Chronicles, and we certainly have seen some interesting things, and God has certainly spoken to my heart as I looked at David's 3 and 30, uh, his three inner circle fighters, the ones that worked side by side with him, the 30, the valiant warriors that he had uh, out of 2 Samuel 23, which is also mentioned in 1 Chronicles 11, verses 10 and following. Uh, but yesterday I failed to mention some of the godly men uh, who were in ministry who had a tremendous effect on my life, uh, going all the way back to Richard Heller, my first pastor after I was saved, and Gene Henson, uh, an inner group that uh, was formed in our church with Campus Crusade for Christ, Bob and Janet Price, my, the first pastor I worked for, Steve Cloud, uh, pastors I worked alongside of, Dave Busby, dear friend Ron Dunn and John Phillips, Peter Lord, Jack Taylor, all had a tremendous influence on my life and I'll be forever grateful to all of them for what they did in my life. Well, David has mourned Abner. He's been disappointed in Joab, but he's left Joab in the hands of God and has uh, let God deal with him. In 2 Samuel 4, Saul's son, Ishabath, uh, had two mighty warriors who turned on him, killed him in his sleep, and took his head to David. And David reacted about that just the way he did when he heard that from men who claimed to have killed Saul. And he had these two warriors uh, who thought they were doing David a favor. Uh, he had them killed because they had been so uh, devious and uh, and taken a uh, life of a man who was sleeping and uh, knew that he could never trust them because of what they had done and their deception with uh, Saul's son. So uh, we, we find in Second Samuel chapter 5 the recording of the fact that David is made king of both Israel to the north, Judah to the south, and we see him entering into a covenant with the people in First Chronicles 11.1. 1. And we see that the uh, com combination of the armies of Judah and Israel became a mighty force to fight against the Philistines. In First Chronicles 12.23, we see that that strengthened army together is going to be very, very uh, effective in fighting the Philistines. And... Um, conquering the Philistines in 2 Samuel 5, 17. So we see a phrase that I think many of you have heard before, but I would reiterate this phrase is absolutely true, and that is we're better together. Uh, Southern Baptists, as in their cooperative program, are better together. Southern Baptists and their missionary programs are better together. Southern Baptists are better together when they can agree on the right sound doctrine straight out of the scripture and uh, certainly we in the local associations of Baptist churches are better together. There's a lot of work that can be done when stronger churches come alongside those that are not quite as strong and help them in every way that they can even if it means a little sacrifice of sharing some of their talent with other churches and I'm really encouraging the local associations uh, to try to encourage the pastors of the stronger churches to be better together by working with the smaller churches and helping them to grow and not being solely interested in their own ministry. We are all better together. Well, that's what we should learn from this. We should learn about loyalty uh, and uh, not do things behind one another's back and uh, we should uh, be loyal to one another. We should be remember uh, that um, one of the things that proves our trustworthiness is our track record and one of the reasons that uh, the nation of Israel and Judah trusted David is he had a track record and his track record was one of faithfulness, fairness and uh, we know then that uh, when someone looks at another you should take a look at his total track record. Now we're not any of us perfect but there is a track record that goes out 
and uh, that track record should be quite clear to everyone around us. So we need to uh, remember that phrase, better together. Whether you're a member in a church and you join in with the work of the church, the church is better together. Uh, whether you're a pastor and you're working in an association or within the Southern Baptist Convention, you're better together. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you, and I think you'll remember that phrase, better together. What is sin? Sin is anything that's displeasing to God. We've all sinned, haven't we? Well, the wages of sin are death. The scriptures tell us that very clearly. We're all guilty. It is written, there's none that is righteous, not even one. Romans 3.10. You see, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ, Jesus our Lord. Romans 6.23 But if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. For whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Did you call on the name of the Lord to be saved? You can right now. All you have to do is believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that he died for your sins, and that you're going to repent from your sins. What a wonderful promise. I hope you've done that today. <music>